inside the brand new Lincoln Corsair. This is Ford's attempt at injecting more money into their luxury brand, and gone are the confusing alphanumeric names, and now they have something you might actually remember. Now, if you've watched any of my Ford videos, you're probably gonna be completely ready for me to tear this thing apart. And I gotta tell you, you're probably gonna be as surprised as I am at how much I truly like this. It is a compact crossover or a small SUV, whatever you wanna term it, but this is proof positive when a brand injects money and time on the interior space, the overall refinement of a platform, how good it can truly be at its intended audience. And I think that's the main thing. Before I get into price, let me talk about the interior space. Now, this is probably one of the best things Ford and Lincoln has ever done in terms of build quality, the way that you feel, the way things look, and yes, this is fully specced out as much you, as you possibly can get it, but you have the metal alloy trim along the dashboard that looks like real metal. You have trim pieces that are not totally disgusting. There is a lot of piano gloss plastic, namely in the center stack area, and that's where it's most offensive, but the use of it in the rest of the cabin is just subtle enough where it doesn't look like it's gonna completely collect dust and look disgusting. The use of chrome is more minimal here than in products in the past. And again, when you diversify all these textures, all these looks, and then you have really nice different types of leathers, like on the steering wheel, you have two-tone, you have two-tone on the dash, and then you have these two-tone seats, and obviously you don't have to get it in gray, but it has a huge wow factor. When you shut the door and you get in here and you understand how quiet, how isolated and how comfortable this is, you're gonna be blown away by it. And I know that's very strange to say. Now, let's talk about some of the other details. Now, one of the biggest and most important things about a luxury product, attention to detail. And Ford and Lincoln have not been very good at that in the past. In fact, their attempts at luxury have been very faux or just fake feeling and chintzy. They're, they overly rely on glossiness, just bad looking plastics, and they've started to completely reduce that here. And there's things like this, the interior chimes. Sounds stupid, but listen. When you start and stop the car, you hear this very musical tone or musical chimes. When you take off the seatbelt, it's not just an annoying ding. And other manufacturers try to do this like Hyundai and Kia, but it, what it sounds like is coming out of a phone speaker. Here, it sounds like it's really coming out of speakers. It's just really nice. The integrated use of some of the electronics. On the steering wheel, they have physical D-pad controls, which feel really good. And then they use a little bit of technology in terms of these backlit LEDs around the D-pad so it only lights up kind of what you need and then, and then it can change kind of the icon based on what menu you're in. The same thing when you turn on the cruise control. It, if you have it off, all the buttons are blacked out. You don't even see them until you turn it on and then all the buttons are illuminated. Again, it's about removing the things that you don't need and adding them there when you actually need them. And it's just, it's subtle, but it's really nice. Same thing with the gauge cluster. Well, I don't particularly like the entire digital screen. The black levels are not good enough. There's a lot of backlight bleed and it doesn't get dim enough at night. They've done a good job at decluttering it. And the cross animations going from screen to screen are pretty good. There's still some frame rate issues there. It's not what it is. It doesn't look completely smooth during its animations. And I, I kind of hate that, but it, it's almost there. And I would say that most of this cars or most of this SUVs detail this is so much better than what Ford and Lincoln have done in the past that I'm excited to see them moving onward and trying to improve this stuff. That's what it's all about to me. If you show a little bit of effort, it goes a long way. Now I'm gonna to continue to focus on the positives because there's a lot. These seats are some of the best you're ever gonna sit in in a car, at least something under like $70,000. $70, they do a great job at the level of adjustment. For example, the thigh cushion can be adjusted left and right. So if you kind of have one leg kind of cramped up, the other one extended, you can move those independently. The second thing is the bolster adjustment and all the adjustments are intuitive and quick and you can get comfortable. Now, it also has a seat massager function in this trim and they work very well 
and the seat heaters are also really, really good when it's cold out. That third setting, the hottest setting, is like a skillet. And you know, it ramps down pretty good. If you go into mode two or mode one, you can always get it right. And again, something like this is about the comfort factor. The seating thing is probably one of the biggest things and just how quiet this interior space is. Yes, they use acoustic, acoustic laminated glass like a lot of manufacturers are doing, but you get in here and you do feel that sense of isolation and comfort. And then you get to the audio system. And this is something Ford, in the Ford brand at least, they have some of the worst audio systems we ever tested. So I was really nervous about this with the Revel, which is part of Harman Kardon. Of course, they own everything. This sound system, just right out of the box, if you leave everything flat, you turn off surround mode. If you use Android Auto, Auto or Apple CarPlay, it sounds good. If you use Bluetooth, it still sounds pretty good. And it's a little bass heavy, but on average, it's much better than most systems out there. If you tweak the bass down, just lower that a little bit, move the treble up a little bit, you get a little bit more brightness out of it. But I'm going to get into some of the negative things because we need to get on the road and drive this as well as look at the underbody. There is some just quality issues in here. I do, I have noticed some rattles in the door panels and that's mostly because it's freezing out, but also the bass from the speakers triggers it. And that's really, really annoying. The next part is this center, this center piece where your volume control tuning knob is, your HVAC controls. It's great that it's all physical. It's all gloss black, but the big thing is whatever they've used to support this panel, the backing plate on it, is it, it actually pushes in the whole console. And it makes you just think they could have put more effort in here. It looks really cheap. It looks modular. And then the fact that it's so loose when you push on it, uh, you can tell. Again, they've made so many improvements, but it's this little detail that doesn't work very well. But everything else feels like a traditional Ford thing after that. There's a lot of parts spin stuff, like your turn signal stocks, your little rear wiper stock. Um, a lot of the knobs, buttons, and switches, they feel very plasticky overall. When you start to interact with them, you realize, ooh, that just feels like a big, cheap piece of plastic. And that's when you get into some of the more detail of it. And you know, if, you, if you're getting this for around 35, 40,000, or even 45,000, okay, because most cars aren't the greatest with that type of stuff. But when you start spending fifty, sixty thousand dollars like on this trim level, yeah, I expect a little bit more on the items that you use every single day. Well, if you're not rolling boogers like Matthew McConaughey in this, you might want to actually use the storage space. And when you look at it, it's pretty average for this segment. Again, this is kind of a crossover, so you're not going to get insane amounts of space. I think the main limiter is the height of this and the load floor is pretty high. There is a half size spare in there, but really the big thing about this is there's no mechanical release for the seats, which is very quick and easy. If you wanna put this down, it's electronic release. You can also kick to open like a lot of companies are doing right now if your hands are full. But the main thing is even the back seats have pretty good room. And if you have a child seat in the back, there's still pl plenty of room for the front occupants where you don't totally have to push your seat forward. It's a pretty usable space, but I always say this, I could give you all the specs, but it means nothing until you go to a dealership and actually check this out. But that's enough for this. Let's put this on the lift and take a look at the underbody. I've had 6 million emails for people wanting to see the underbody of the Corsair. Actually, no, there was none. But what you're looking at is Ford's new global platform for compact SUVs. This is a front wheel drive architecture that can be kind of modified, not kind of, it is modified to include all wheel drive, which this has combined with a 2.3 liter turbocharged four cylinder. Now the difference between something like the Ford Escape, which this is shared with, is Lincoln uses far more NVH materials. And what is that? Those are special covers like this, these asphalt panels that they use from the front and the back of the car to reduce road noise. And the, le the more that they use, the less you hear when you're driving. And in a Lincoln, that's what it's about. It's about that refined experience. Even in the wheel wells, you see the wheel liners are this carpeted material that helps to reduce tire noise being transmitted up, upward and into the cabin. Now, everything else is pretty basic. This, again, this has to be shared out between multiple vehicles, but you do have a, an aluminum lower control arm that's connected to a steel carrier, the steel hub, everything is strut in the front. 
and towards the back of the car, we get into a little bit more excitement. So let's take a look. Here we are. Transporting myself into the back, we see some things like a multi-link rear end that has an aluminum knuckle. And when you look at this, it's quite different than a traditional design because the knuckle extends out and this carrier hangs down to mount the lower half of the shock. The shock mounting point is here and the spring carrier is behind it. Now, what does that mean? Well, it's more compact for one. And two, you see the use of adaptive dampers here. And I would say that adaptive dampers on this car make a big difference, a big difference in the softer way. Usually it means I'm gonna go full hard, I'm gonna go hard and harder where your teeth get knocked out, but this is supple riding. Whether you're in excite mode, which is sport, or whether you're in comfort or normal, it just does a really good job. This is a very well dampened car. It's super comfortable and it's very isolated, including in the rear seat. You don't hear a lot of NVH and I know that's exactly what they're going for here. But that's enough of this. I think you've seen everything you could stomach. Let's take it for a drive. Lincoln Corsair, 2.3 liters, turbo, all-wheel drive, and this thing drives amazing. <laughs> if you see any of my Ford videos, you're going to know that I am not the biggest fan a lot of a lot of their cookie cutter products, and this, while it's not perfect, this is one of the best combinations of ride quality, comfort, quietness, drivability that you're going to get in this type of form factor of a vehicle. It's really, really soft. It's super compliant. It handles every pavement type and it is quick. The interior appointments, which I kind of covered on the, in the inside part of this, talking about the seats, the electronics, all the little little things that they do to make you feel more comfortable work amazingly here for when you're driving. There is literally no fatigue at driving this at all. And I think that the, that's the biggest surprise for me. You know, you, if you strip away price, you strip away like branding and all of that and look at this more objectively, this is a vehicle that I would absolutely love driving every day for the core functions that you do in real life. Snow, salt, rain, bad pavement, it does everything really well. And I had this out in a snowstorm, which is really great for SUVs because you get to kind of explore the way that the all wheel drive system's programmed. And in here, you have a couple different drive modes. You have regular, you have conserve, you have slippery and deep conditions. And I found when you switch to deep conditions, it turns off the traction control. And in the snow, I thought this would be plowing all over the place, but Ford and Lincoln have programmed this to allow you a ton of slip angle in the rear where it goes more rear biased. So you actually can rotate the SUV through the turns. And even without snow tires, I was so impressed at how this thing drove, got through everything. I feel, I felt stable. I felt safe. And I just had so much confidence driving this and combining the other factors of it. The transmission performance is pretty good. The engine performance is really good for what this is in a four cylinder. And I can't imagine you wanting anything more than this. The 2.3 liter is perfectly matched for what this is. And all the electronics and everything in here works just well enough where it doesn't annoy you. It doesn't get intrusive. Like the gauge cluster, you pretty much only have the information that you need on it. And at night, you can turn off the main screen, which isn't really distracting to begin with. It's not kind of so high up in the air, like on the Explorer was where you're distracted by it. I mean, everything just feels very good. I mean, for me, <laughs> it's really difficult to, to say this, but there's literally not much to complain about in here. And if you're looking at this for a vehicle, you're gonna put a lot of miles on, you're gonna cruise, you're gonna have passengers in here, a normal person, you'd have to have something wrong with you to complain about most of the ride quality, the drivability. It just is great from that perspective. Now, if I had to nitpick something, I would say 
you know, they don't allow you good customization of certain things. Like, I can't go into a true manual mode for the automatic transmission. There's not the uh, turning off traction and stability control independently of each other. Basically, all the electronics kind of do what they want. So this is kind of a point and shoot type car. You're going to basically let everything take over for you here and you're just gonna cruise. Turn on the sound system, which as I explained to you, sounds great subjectively and objectively. And you're gonna enjoy the seats, the comfort and everything that Lincoln has tried to do here to make this more of a special product than what the base level Fords have been doing. And that is why I appreciate the driving experience so much. But, you know, I think most of the negative things about the Corsair are mostly like exterior, interior, more of the subjective elements of how they did their design versus the overall drivability of it. But now is a good time to get into the final thoughts. Final thoughts on the Lincoln Corsair. Over the course of this video, you've seen I've been quite complimentary towards it. And that is because it's great to see a Lincoln and Ford product that understands its core buyer. This is for someone that values a few things. Ride comfort, ride refinement, quietness, and great seats. This is something that is a problem in the compact crossover segment or crossover segment as a whole because most manufacturers have this obsession with making it sporty. And a lot of them are, I don't even know what that means. But this, the Corsair is supremely comfort comfortable it, it has a great ride quality over every pavement type it's very quiet and the seats are excellent so what you get when you're driving this is just calmness you can ride it in all day and that's what i did i, I really appreciated that the second part is the 2.3 liter turbo it is absolutely the perfect engine for this body it is quick it's fast you're never going to ask for anything more and the transmission performance is good here there is no issue with it and i think you know that's the main thing you want a, a vehicle you can ride it in all day have a decent sound system specifically for a ford you're gonna like it now the negatives are there's still some chintziness here they don't understand attention to detail and some of the quality interiors the door cards rattle at higher volumes from the audio system the plastics on the center stack are really bad. I mean, like I said, they're to just kind of push in. The plastic or the piano gloss black plastic scratches so easily. I mean, you could scratch it with a fingernail. The plasti chrome trim just looks cheap. So they have some work to do on the attention to detail, but I would say it's like 75% there. If you're looking for one of the most comfortable types of vehicles in the segment, take a look at the Corsair. Thanks for watching. See you next time. I'll show him. I'll get ripped and punch him right in his fucking teeth. Then he'll learn. Please help me. Unsubscribe. Unfriend him. Please help.